Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. I am James Just. With me today is John Cameron and Michael Graves. And gentlemen, the IRS tax day has just passed, and the IRS is whining about not having enough resources to abuse taxpayers. It's just essentially what they're doing. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's kind of strange for, me, for us as libertarians when the IRS is sitting there saying, we need more money so we can hire more agents, so we can go and and tax the rich taxpayers. But you don't need 87,000 agents or whatever it is they're trying to get to go after the rich people. You already have plenty of agents to go after rich people. They're really going after the gig workers and the freelancers and the average people who are just trying to make a living in these mm -hmm. difficult times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the, the simple solution is simplify the tax code. But nobody wants to do that because I think there's about a million people in this country on, on a, like a conservative estimate who make their money, uh, their living, and very good livings. We're talking about CPAs, tax attorneys, these overpaid IRS agents from the complexity of the tax code. And when, whenever anybody tries to simplify it, uh, companies like, well, I don't want to mention the name because I might have to use them for my taxes again. One of the major providers of, of tax preparation software has full-time lobbyists uh, to try to prevent the government from simplifying the tax code. But, you know, the IRS now is so efficient that it answers 11% of the calls. I'm not saying first call. I'm saying ever from consumers who call in to their hotline or helpline, it answers slightly over one out of 10 of those calls. If that was a private sector organization, they'd have gone bankrupt years ago. We keep pumping money in. Solution, simplify the tax code. I mean, in my, my wife is English, and in England, people who are employed, basically, unless you're making over the equivalent of a quarter million dollars a year, don't fill out a tax return because it's pay as you go, and that's all they do. It's so simple that 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 they don't even touch a piece of paper, and even those people that do fill out a piece of paper certainly don't have to to deal with a tax code that's what 122,000 pages long or something. It's crazy. Something ridiculous, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, uh, you know, a good friend of mine once described the IRS as a terrorist organization. And, um, you know, I agree that, you know, basically a reasonable tax code could fit on like an index card. Mm. You know, uh, you just have a simple, you know, rate schedule. Um, yeah, okay, they're backed up. But, you know, the real problem is government's too big. Uh, you know, yeah. this issue of, you know, how are they going to, you know, appropriate all of our income, you know, wouldn't be such an issue if they weren't, you know, off misspending the money on the Welfare, warfare state. Uh, so, you know, get rid of a lot of that stuff and. I like that. Welfare, warfare state. Don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. Yeah, well, it's. There's also one of the aspects of the tax code that we don't talk about very much is that they use it as a way to control us, to control our behavior, right? They give you tax credits for buying an electric car or they give you tax credits for buying your house or tax credits for oh, yeah. this or tax penalties if you don't behave mm -hmm. the way they want you to. Oil depletion allowance to, yep. to favor the carbon. Yeah, that's absolutely folks, the yeah. thought process. It's it's a bunch of bureaucrats and busy bodies, you know, kind of trying to incentivize you to do this thing or that thing based on, well, you know, we're, we're over here in Washington, D.C. and we're going to, um, you know, we're going to pay, we're going to pay, you know, we're going to pay back some of your own money if you do what we want. Yeah. And, and on some degree, it kind of makes a little sense. You want to incentivize certain types of behavior, but once it becomes established as a norm, it, be, mm. it becomes like the, uh, the moral hazard, right? Where you just continually to do it because, hey, it worked that one time, so we'll do it again. And it mm. worked that one time, so we'll do it again. Mm. And now you start doing it for all kinds of things mm. that have no rational basis in that we should be doing it. Mm. We're just doing it because, hey, we can, right? Not I, just because you can yeah. do something doesn't mean you should, but yes, because sir. you can, they continue to do it. And I think it's actually more evil than that. I think it's yeah. that, that, that the, the uh, people in power, call them the deep state, the duopoly, whatever you want to call them, because certainly, they're certainly not representative of the people. The permanent bureaucracy. Uh, yeah, the permanent bureaucracy. And the radicals on, on the two sides, which were basically this close together. Yes, I mean, sir. Um, uh, run everything. The radicals move to power as they do in the teachers' unions and the NEA and all the rest of that. 
Um, but what they do is punish their enemies and reward their friends. They punish their enemies, reward their friends. They take money from their enemies yes. and give it to their friends. They take money from people who produce and give it to people who don't so that people who don't, who get the free money, will vote to keep them in power. And, and so, you know, if it was just they want to reward behavior because this behavior is good, oh, then yeah. I would be I would be less uh, I would feel less loathing for them. But when I know that it's flat out punish their enemies and reward their friends, that's what's frightening to me, and and that's the reason that they don't want to they don't want to simplify the tax code because they couldn't pin it punish and reward. That's exactly right. That's, uh, yeah. you know, this is typically what happens is, uh, you know, what starts as a well-intentioned, you know, we, we can at least suppose well-intentions mm -hmm. um, for this kind of scheme to, uh, okay, this behavior is better than that behavior, so we'll, you know, we'll tax cigarettes, but not, you know, we'll tax gas because that's going to, you know, get, you know, consumers of gas to do this thing that we think is better. But, mm -hmm. of course, you know, even, even if that were the initial principle, um, this whole scheme and structure is just going to get co-opted by, by the people who actually run it, who have their own incentives, um, and it's just going to get twisted into something that, that doesn't benefit anybody. Yeah, and, and that is the problem, right? Our politicians are often now behaving in ways that only benefit a very narrow perspective of people. Mm. And we've actually got a, uh, a, an example of that here recently in California, a bill that was designed to prevent charter cities from having ranked choice voting for like city councils and those kind of things was actually recently voted um, down in the, in the assembly. But oddly enough, a couple of years ago in 2019, they passed a bill, a bill to allow ranked choice voting in general cities, but Governor Newsom vetoed that bill. And so now essentially charter cities can still have ranked choice voting, general cities can't. I don't mm. know the difference. You guys are in uh, both more <laughs> politically. Than well, it's I just am. the way a city is set up. Whether right. you have a charter or whether you just use a general, mm. uh, the the general, I forget what it is, a general, mm. um, like what, yeah. or something. I'll look yeah. it. I'll look it up later. Yeah. Up so there's, later. there's a general city, and then there's a charter cities, and charter cities can change their charter to allow for ranked choice voting. Mm -hmm. And what what do we what do we want as libertarians? Would would ranked well, choice that's voting make question, more sense? Is ranked choice voting is is ranked yeah. choice voting actually a preferable way? I'm very skeptical of changing. Personally, I'm very skeptical of changing um, our voting habits, the way we vote. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm willing to let the experiment happen. So, if cities and counties and states want to make the experiment with ranked right. choice voting, so I can see, hey, what's it going to work? How's it going to actually going to function? I'm all for it. So I'm not against ranked choice voting. I'm just skeptical of any change. Yeah, ranked choice is, um, I think it would be a positive reform because, it, so this is a po as opposed to the, the current system, which is, is often called like first past the post. And, um, you know, what you see, and certainly in our national elections and, and in general, is, um, you know, uh, the, you know, the 2016 election infamously is like the best example ever of this, where, you know, you had these two candidates and nobody, nobody likes either of them, right? Um, but it's like, well, I got to vote for this person because otherwise the person I, you know, dislike even more is going to get in. Uh, and everybody over here is doing that. And everybody over here is saying, well, I, you know, look, there's someone else I like better, but I can't let, you know, this really bad person get in. And so you get this, you know, divergence to the, the polls, um, even when, uh, you know, a different candidate might, you know, might be able to emerge as a consensus that might be preferred mm -hmm. by a lot of people. That is prevented uh, by first past the post system. Ranked choice kind of allows that to emerge because it's a voting system where uh, if you, you, you kind of, it's ranked choice. So you put, you know, oh, okay, you know, Joe Jorgensen with the Libertarian Party, you know, that's my first choice, but, you know, I have a second choice. If she doesn't win, you, you, you get to have that input. So you don't um, mm. this this issue of the dilemma between you know the the greater or lesser evil um, mm. you you're you're able to vote for you're able to vote your conscience mm. and have that heard and I, I think that is an improvement. I, I think we should be able to vote none of the above and just keep, keep the office open uh, because I don't why do we need a president? We certainly don't need yeah. the, the imperial presidencies that we've had since. What the Kennedys, at least. Well, Franklin Delano Roosevelt yeah, Bell, yeah. Uh, was probably the first real imperial president, and we don't need the pomp and circumstance. When these people go somewhere for a meeting, 
literally a thousand retainers go along with them. It costs millions of dollars to have them show up and speak somewhere. Rome didn't have Rome didn't have this kind of stuff. This is supposed to be a representative democracy. What do we even need some of these people for? Well, and it does bring up an issue because in these modern days we have what twenty five percent of the people support Republicans, twenty five percent of the people support Democrats, which means most of their support comes from people who just like the other guy worse, like you're yeah, pointing yeah, yeah. out. Mm -hmm. And so they don't actually have the support for their policies, which is why we're so divided. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really agree with that. You know, you have this this problem that that does arise out of our voting system, which, you know, things like uh, the overseas wars, right? You at this point, you know, it's been some years now when it's been like a good solid majority of opposition to these continued overseas wars. And, and yet they continue. Hmm. And how could that be? We have a democratic system. Well, we have a sort of corrupt messy democratic system that doesn't output the the things that people actually want because yeah. uh you, you got to vote well, for the lesser evil it doesn't matter actually, if uh, sometimes that's a good thing because you people yeah, are sure, sure. people want some pretty stupid <laughs> yeah, things. fair enough fair enough yeah and, and in order to get it they want to take it away from somebody else that's my problem but i address that problem yeah. you just you just shrink the government shrink down it's the they, government you know nobody down. needs to have any say in your in yeah. your business and, and there's stuff the, that there's stuff that's in your life that nobody should have any say over right and i guess the problem is is that these politicians act as if they have the support the popular support hmm. when they really don't they hmm. have maybe a third of the country supports them but they're acting like they have 50 60 percent 70 percent of support but the pollsters they yeah because you were more say popular than probably. hillary hillary clinton now, now yeah. you have a mandate yeah well, okay, I, that makes I, a lot I of sense bill maher saying and because I'm starting to like that guy, uh, <laughs> not not some of us. He's a classic liberal, maybe a classic progressive. So uh, what sure, is that? Sure, but at what least he uh, at least he's, he's willing funny. to buck the popular narrative. It's funny, and he said yeah. that all these people were running, and they were running on the platform that uh, they weren't Trump. And he said, "Well, a lamppost isn't Trump either." But yes, I sir. wouldn't vote yeah. for a lamppost. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, it, I I know the parliamentarian system is rather unwieldy, but a vote of no confidence is is a uh, it's a pretty cool thing. And, you know, when that happens, they have to hold an election. And and they have coalitions in other countries. They have, you know, I mean, mm, it, yeah. it, it, the Environmental Party with the Labor Party, and then they have what we would call Libertarian Party here. Mm. And that's called liberal because that's actually <laughs> what liberal means. Yes, yeah. But they've co-opted it here to mean socialism. So go figure. But yeah, it, yeah, labels mean nothing around yeah. here these days. Anyway. We're talking about meaning nothing, but mm. kind of meaning everything. We're going to go ahead and move on here. Elon Musk and Twitter are kind of in a mm. in a social media I fight it, over the ownership of Twitter. Yeah, and this has become this big thing because it's a, it's strange where I've seen well, essentially the political left, and I hate that word because it, the political left and political right are meaningless terms nowadays. Mm. But what we call the political left mm. <laughs> has essentially flipped out over the, the this notion that Elon. Musk might own Twitter and allow more free speech mm. on oh, yeah. Twitter. Mm. Yeah, they hit a, he hit a nerve with this one. He's really, yeah. uh, this is one of the, you know, <laughs> it's one of these cultural issues and it's a bit of a hot button with a lot of people. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, the, the, the Twitterites, you know, they kind of, they, there's been this sort of corporate censorship apparatus that has come into being mm. not um, sort of it, it is yeah it's, yeah yeah no it's it's it it's been real real yeah. bad i mean it's just sort of been getting progressively worse over the last several years and i think the 2020 you know pandemic stuff really accelerated mm. uh this trend but Pan you know it's panic you know word panic demic the word for it <laughs> yeah it, but you know you have your sort of these these corporate you know you got your cor corporate overlords and they're they're going to tell you what your information you're allowed to see mm. Um, you know, and then the defense is that, well, you know, it's a private company, they can do what they want. Well, you know, if a private company does something that I think is wrong, just because I don't think I have the legal right to tell them what to do doesn't mean I can't disapprove, withhold my business, mm. right? <gasps> you mean, you mean you could withhold your business and influence a private company that way? Yeah. Or you can complain on social media about the behavior of a private company and hope to have the influence. But also one of the questions is, if these companies are being dragged in front of Congress and the con Congress is saying you need to do something about the speech on your platform, mm -hmm. are they really actually oh, God, behaving yeah. of their own free will? Mm -hmm. So are they actually doing it? No, big time a, government thumb on the scale. It's actually a lot worse than that because yeah. there's there's financial incentives really tied up in this, right? I mean, when you you think about, um, you know, what was it? I think during the Obama era, 
um, you had that sort of revelation, I think it was connected to the Snowden leak, uh, where they found that, well, basically all big tech, all these private private corporations are already feeding all of your information mm -hmm. to the government and the NSA. It's already happening, right? And it's like, okay, where's private? Like, where's the division between between the government and, and these so-called private businesses? So if they have that kind of leverage over them, you know, if the NSA is coming in and saying, look, you got to give us all your stuff, you got to give us all your users' data, because otherwise we're going to shut you down. Mm. Then how independent is that really? I would say not meaningfully mm. independent. Where, where I really noticed, um, I, I don't, unless you read widely, you don't notice, I don't think, how pervasive the, uh, and I hate to use the word left, I would call it the socialist groupthink is, and, and especially in media. Well, people go into journalism, they're typically, um, I think 80 plus percent of them, I could have pulled that number out of who knows where, uh, are for well-to-do, well-off families, oh, yeah. and they mm -hmm. go into journalism because yes, you can't make any money in journalism, but they don't need <laughs> to make any money because they have rich parents. And they've been spoiled by their parents to not understand how they made the money. And they have a confused view of the world and sit in journalism classes that are being taught by people who've had rich parents that protected them from the world. And so it's this group think. Mm. I was reading a Wired article. And Wired is supposed to be a technology magazine. How about how that they couldn't possibly take Twitter private and, and allow <laughs> and allow yeah. uh, free reign of ideas because then there would be anti-Semitism and there'd be racism and there'd be this and there'd be that and there'd be all the rest of that. I seem to remember this thing called the First Amendment that says that we have a right to say pretty much whatever we want to say, how stupid it is. And, and by having that, all of those minority voices that would be suppressed, like capitalists, uh, would have a, a reason to say, but they thought it was patently just evil to let a man take something as important as Twitter private so he wouldn't be regulated in his speech. And this is a freaking technology magazine. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's, I think that's right. You know, the journalists really are. Yeah, it's it's kind of unfortunate. It's not exactly their fault, but it's, you know, they it is yeah, a it problem is. that they're drawn from Beautiful. like a particular segment of society rather than broadly. So you do kind of get people with similar views. You don't get diversity of viewpoint. Um, what's really funny about this Elon Musk, you know, bidding for, for ownership of Twitter is that, um, you know, they've been saying, you know, well, you know, we can, you know, censorship, it's for the you know, customer's own good and it's a private company, they can do what they want. Well, okay, Musk is a, you know, an individual acting in his, you know, private capacity. And he's saying, I think, you know, if I buy this thing, the shareholders will benefit, will make more money by having a, an open mm -hmm. platform that, that doesn't censor viewpoint. And then now, oh, no, that's not allowed, right? Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. I mean, it just doesn't, the uh, argument doesn't make yeah, sense. A private sense. company can do what it wants as long what, as it doesn't want to buy the- As long as it doesn't want to do what, what we don't, want don't like. <laughs> what's, what's hilarious <laughs> is that they're, they're talking about, well, you know, Twitter hasn't performed well and hasn't done well. And, and, you know, everybody thinks that if they ran it, it would do better. And good luck, Mr. Musk. Mm. Well, but, but nobody in the popular socialist verse of journalism has, has said the obvious. The reason that Twitter and these other platforms are all suffering so much, Facebook is leaving, losing people left and right, all the rest yeah. of them. I, don't, I think old people are on Facebook now. I mean, basically, people... Yeah, are, yeah. Are, are leaving these platforms because they are censored. Oh, that's I think the that's reason exactly they're right. leaving. Yeah, that and, is and, the. Um... And anybody that says there's any other reason that they're leaving because they are open sources of information to the government and they are <laughs> censored, anybody thinks there's any other reason that they're doing it is stupid. Well, when you censor, you lose your value yeah. because you're, you're yes. not you're now not going you're not now getting what you want to get. You're yeah, getting... there's supposed to be new media companies that are different from the old media companies that only give you the same regurgitated viewpoint, mm -hmm. and then they're just okay. We're going to go back to the same business model. Yeah, we're, just, gonna you know, sit... we're, we're not going to be different. Well, okay, then what's the what's the point of this? Right? Yeah, they keep this pumping is, uh, the same stuff. This isn't that, new media anymore that you can get from anywhere <laughs> else. It's, it's pretty it's wild. A... Yeah, but I, I think you hit the nail on the head, John. It's. Uh, uh, this is it's the beginning of a trend. I, I think this is really just beginning. And 
um, you know, there's been sort of like a, a change in the direction of these companies over, over 10, you know, go back 10, 10, 15 years ago, it really wasn't like this. These really were, you know, sort of mm -hmm. more true to their roots um, tech businesses that were kind of like, yeah, you know, come and it's, it's like the internet. It's like the wild west people, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever works, you know, you're allowed to do. Um, and now it's okay. Now we're going to regulate mm -hmm. your behavior because we own the company, but that's okay. If you want to try to do that, but I don't, think there's a lot of customers that don't want that. That's yeah, well, sort of the issue. Let's put freedom built this thing, but we're going to somehow save it by taking that freedom away. It makes mm -hmm. no sense. Yes, sir. Yeah. And we're talking about the change of, you know, change of dynamics. The uh, Democrats here in Congress are facing a uh -oh. changing dynamics here coming forward. Oh, darn. <laughs> it's the, it is not a pretty shame. picture with the, with the elections coming up, right? The, dem the, the election is I not pretty. I just feel so sorry for them. Oh, man. It's. And it really doesn't. How, we were just talking about before the show. John was saying you should put up a, a wants to get involved in a um, a pool, pool. See how many oh, seats they actually yeah. lose because it, it it could be a it could be a bloodbath. Mm. And we don't really know. Well, and I'm not saying I I favor uh, the Republicans because they're, well, they're just, just as, as I call them the Republicans and the Blamecrats. I mean, they're it's a duopoly, but. You know, the fact that, that, that these people have, have acted in the way they've acted uh, and are shocked that they're facing consequences blows my mind. And they could very well be in a position where there's a super majority of Republicans, which Yeesh. I'm not looking forward Terrifying. to by, yeah. by any means. Um, no one's looking forward to I'm that. I'm not looking forward to that at all. But not no one. That's unfair. The, 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 the Democrats have been trying to tweak the... Um, the filibuster and get rid of it so they could have their way. And now they're saying, well, I want to hold on because maybe we're going to get our butt kicked in the next election and we're going to need the filibuster yeah, yeah, yeah. so that we're not thrown in jail. So, I mean, it's... Yeah. A lot of these things know. that we pointed out, you guys are going to regret some of these positions you're taking when the shoe's on the other foot and yes, they will eventually get on the other foot, right? Yeah. It always ends up on the other foot. I want foot. them shoeless. Yeah. I don't want either, yeah, yeah, either one of these parties to have any kind of power at all. I mean, we, we, are, we are in a freaking duopoly, and nowhere in, our, we're, nowhere in our Constitution does it say that there's two parties who are razor-thin close and more interested in controlling every single bit of our lives and favoring the war machine or their welfare machine, like you said, welfare or warfare state. That's, nobody wants that. But we end up with that, and and you know the idea that the the you know the Democrats wanted something, which is get rid of filibuster, and now they're realizing, you know, if this goes the way even our own political pundits say is going to go, we're going to need the filibuster. It's you know it's crazy. I mean, well, the pox so, upon you because you wished it upon yourself. I'm almost politics, I'm almost right? excited. Short-sighted politics. It's, yeah. it's the death it is. of kind of the nation, right? I do want to say that um, you know we should be careful trusting poll numbers. Mm. You know, if you that I really think that's the lesson of uh, 2016, 2020. You know, you had 2016 was like shockingly bad, but you know you, this mm. has been a, a problem that's been persisting where. Can you really believe these numbers? This isn't you go, get to election day and people who were supposed to have been like, you know, shoe in or easily dethroned and it just doesn't happen mm. or, you know, Trump winning at all. You know, that was not in the poll numbers. So, well, it wasn't um, it. You gotta be skeptical. But um, I agree, it's it's not looking great for the, uh, the, the Democratic Party. Um, and I don't know what to say. I mean, they they kind of deserve it. You know, they're I don't like Republicans better, but. I know it's difficult for us it, libertarians yeah, sitting it's, here. We're it's going, just ugly. We want to it's sit just, here and point fingers well, and laugh at the it's, Democrats. It's just a going, reaction to the people in power getting mm. power, and they okay now they have the majority. They think they can do what they want, and we're gonna you know we're gonna devalue the currency. We're gonna print a lot of money. We're gonna you know more well, wars. Yeah, so Republicans went we're along gonna, with that. Crap. Oh yeah, no, they're they're just, they're as, well, just so, as bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, but it's just you know okay we're okay we're gonna switch back to the other party. It's a reaction to to just mm. terrifically bad policy. Now, if if there was a Goldwater Republican running, I would I would be a little. Yeah, that'd be know, fun. I'd be yeah. I'd be okay. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be okay, but I'd be less loathsome. Yeah, but who was the last? <laughs> yeah. Who was the last Goldwater less Republican? So I mean, you know, if it's a Tea Party, in the party you know, right? Tea Party even. I mean, back when Republicans actually, I'm I, I I'm, pretended I'm to a, care about limited government and small taxes. Right, right, right. Yeah, limited government, is, uh, small taxes. <laughs> that is the problem. I'm, yeah, I'm a veteran, so I am I am um, not really happy about the war machine we got going and the fact that Congress doesn't really care about the efficiency of the war machine. They just want lots of goods and services to come out of the, the warfare state. You know, that bothers me. But 
you know, if there was a party that, uh, and, and it's happened over and over again. If you scrub, if you scrub the word libertarian off of and give yeah. a political poll out there, about 70% of the populace, at least before the brainwashing that occurred over the last two years of the pandemic, line up pretty much libertarian. But, you know, the, the two parties have, have, have uh, used fear so effectively to, to paint the other person as evil incarnate that we have this, that we have this warfare. So it, yeah. it's going to be fun. I know you want to go into another topic. Well, so I'm, yeah, well we got, we got like, we got like five minutes. And so I want to cover this last topic. It's, but we actually shows how Democrats have gotten into this position because there was this uh, Democrat who is challenging Ron DeSantis in Florida as for governor. <laughs> she was on a flight when, the, when the, the mask mandate was lifted. So she took her mask off and she took a picture with, you know, a nice happy picture. Yeah, I get to Celebrate. fly without my mask off. Mask off. And they are railing her over the coals. They're yeah. not, they're, they're not yeah, going to yeah. support but her he, anymore. They pulled all kinds of support. Just simply because she was happy, she didn't have to wear a mask on a plane. It's pretty yeah. funny, and honestly. Here's, it's sad, but it's... Here's, here's what the most disgusting part of that was. One of the congressmen, that, that uh, Democratic congressmen that raked her over the rails, said, uh, well, you know, if you don't care about the health of children. And I'm thinking, why do you bring children in this over and over again because children are basically, especially little kids, immune to this yeah, thing. Yeah, everybody knows they that don't, children. They, they, they don't. They don't get by sick. By any reasonable measure, have basically not had a health impact from this. And what's crazy is there there is a negligible, and and even the CDC says this. So how the politicians can say you don't care about children because you're not wearing a mask when children don't get sick? I mean, that is disgusting. Using people's yeah, using fear children over, as their, a political their, over their children chip. Yeah, it's as not, a bargaining chip is right. like saying, you want to kill all the dogs. I mean, it's just... Well, it's always for the children, John. Yeah. The, all, it's, everything's for the children, right? We've, we've, for the last yeah. 30 years, my entire adult life, anytime someone wants to do... Anytime some politician mm -hmm. wants to do something, it's for the children. Mm -hmm. It's always for the children. And if you're against it, how can you be against helping mm -hmm. children? If it was really for the children, we would pay the best teachers in the schools a bonus for teachers teaching better and punish the worst Ooh. teachers for teaching Well, if it was really works. about for That's the children, topic. we'd yeah. have school choice so children yeah. can choose, and parents can choose a school environment. Well, even in public yeah. schools, they, their own numbers indicate that a, a good teacher can teach one and a half to two years curriculum in a, in, in a school year, and a bad teacher will teach a half a year's curriculum. Now, if the curriculum is all the crazy stuff they're 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 teaching now. I don't know, but uh, you're right. Privatize it all. But anyway, yeah. it's it, that that was what disgusted me the most when they said you don't care about children. Yeah, look, when it when it comes off. to what's good for children, look, it's the parents' business. People are going to disagree, but you know, I think what's been the most atrocious thing to see in this this COVID era, the way things have gone, is the treatment of children. You know, I have a good friend. I talked to about this, um, and he's you know. We were discussing this, and it's like, yeah, it's kind of crazy how um, how the sort of iron fist of these sort of you know the pandemic freakout and regulations have come down on children harder than it has mm -hmm. on adults. And my friend says, yeah, there's a simple explanation: we have this democratic system, and children don't vote, mm -hmm. and the result has been pretty atrocious. I mean, you just you have the population that is in the least or slash pretty much no danger. Um, other than maybe certain select people, but mm. but in general, children are not in danger from from COVID, and um, they've you know they've had to you know endure, continue to endure wearing masks in the classroom and they, they have plastic grown up with plastic dividers between them. I mean, this is just not nice to see, yeah. and um, you know I think it's everyone's it's an individual decision. If you want to wear a mask, if you think that's where your risk rewards at, people have different risk mm -hmm. tolerances and mm -hmm. different health situations. So it's your business. But um, in general, I think that the COVID is, you know, we're, we really are starting to get past it in, in yeah. some pretty big ways and think this is something to be celebrated. Yeah. And we, well, the thing is, we wonder how our country is so divided right now. And this uh, is exactly yeah. how it's divided. Right now. Someone cannot simply celebrate the fact that they are feel free to, to, to breathe on a plane and just not be dragged over the coals by people on their own team, their own side. Yeah. There's, they're eating their own. And, we, and so we wonder why our country is divided. We yeah, because the political philosophy is, is we got to use the power of government, the power of the state to impose this. And if we don't, then, then some, you know, they think something bad's going to happen. 
Mm -hmm. um, so, but you know, I think the answer is that it's, it's none of your business whether I wear a mask or celebrate, you know, not having to wear a mask. And you know, if you want to wear a mask, go for it. More power to you. You can wear it too. All right. We've got just about 30 seconds. So we're going to wrap this up. We're going to thank you guys for being here. Thank, thank you, you Michael. Thank you, John. We want to thank Access Sacramento for being here. We want to thank all of you for watching. And we want to remind you that Access Sacramento has their big day of giving coming up on May 5th. They have supported us during these last couple of years. So let's make sure we support mm -hmm. them in their time of need. And I think that is about it. Mm. We are on. Please remember to love everybody. Mm. And good night. Yeah, that would be nice if we, we actually looked for the good in other people instead of the evil. A little love goes a long way. It does. You know, spreading love is a, is a yeah. good thing.